Hello. In this video, I want to discuss some more examples of curves that we get from vector functions. Now remember, if we have a vector function r, uh, let's say r goes from an interval i into r2, then sometimes we can use this vector function to describe a curve. And the curve we get is basically the range of this vector function. So it's all the possible values of the vector function r with t in our interval i. And, and this gives us a curve in r2. Although that's the idea. Sometimes c doesn't look anything like a curve. Although in the examples we consider, uh, we'll get nice curves. So the example I want to look at is this one. R of t is equal to c cos t, c sine t. Here c is a constant and t varies from 0 to 2 pi. So we want to know what does the curve look like. So what is the set of values uh, rt with t in the interval 0 to pi look like? What is this? Well, let's see. Let's take a point x, y in the set C on the curve. Then that means we can write x in the form r of t, where t is something between 0 and 2 pi. And that means x is of the form first component c cos t, second one c sine t. Now, what can we say about this point x? Well, one thing we can note is that if we take the x component squared plus the y component squared, that's going to give us c squared cos squared t plus c squared sine squared t. And if we remember our trig identities, we know that cos squared t plus sine squared t is 1. So what we see is we get x squared plus y squared is c squared. So if we have a point x on this curve c, then this point satisfies x squared plus y squared is equal to c squared. And this equation, x squared plus y squared is c squared, that's familiar, right? That's just the equation for a circle. So, if we say, well, let S be the circle, so all the points x equals x, y, so that x squared plus y squared is c squared, then what we've shown here is that if we take any point on our curve c, then this point is also on the circle. So in other words, the curve C lies on the circle S. Now, uh, what more can we say? Well, is C the entire circle? Is it just a part of the circle? And if so, what part of the circle? Well. It turns out, and this is what we're going to show now, that our curve C is in fact the circle. So how do we do that? Right. How do we show that our curve C is in fact the circle? Well, we already know 
that any point on our curve is on the circle. Right? So the curve lies on the circle. Right? So what we have to do is to show that every point on the circle sits on the curve, and then the two would be equal. Right? So we start with the point x on the circle. Right? And we say x is, say, xy. Right? So that means x squared plus y squared is z squared. Right? And let's draw a picture for ourselves. Right? Here's the x-axis, the y-axis, and it's a, there goes the circle S. Right? Now, this circle S has center here at the origin. Right? We have a point X there on the circle, and the radius of the circle is C. Right? So now, if we drop a perpendicular here, right, and remember this point has coordinates X, Y, then that length is Y, and that length is X. So, let's insert here, this a look at this angle here. So this is the angle between the line segment joining the origin to x and the positive x-axis. Right? T, we say, is the magnitude of this angle. Right? Now, in this triangle, we see that cos t is adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over c, which means x is c times cos t. And in exactly the same way, we have that y is c times sine t. Right. And clearly this t sits between 0 and 2 pi. Right. Here we have t equals 0. Right. And if you go all the way around, right, this is going to be t is pi over 2. Here we have t is pi. And so on until we get back here. t equals to 2 pi. Right. So what does this show? Well, This shows that if we have a point x on the circle, then x is of the form c cos t c sine t, in other words, r of t. And this t sits between 0 and 2 pi. In other words, if x is on the circle, then x is an element of the range of our vector function. x is an element of our curve C. So what have we got? If x is an S, then x is in C. So in other words, S is a subset of C. Right? And we already know that any point on C is on S. In other words, C is a subset of S. So that means our curve C is equal to S. In other words, the curve C, parametrized by this vector function R, C cos T, C sine T, with T between 0 and 2 pi, this gives you a circle. The center of the circle is at 0, and the radius is equal to c. Right, so now we can draw the circle, or we can try. Right, so we start here. This is where t is 0. We go up, down, 
and all the way around. Right, so this is the curve parametrized by our vector function r. Right. And we can notice that we're moving counterclockwise around the circle. t is 0, t is pi over 2, t is pi, t is 3 pi over 2, and now here again, t is 2 pi. Okay. So this is a, a very important example, right? Circles. And from this, we can we can modify our vector function r to get different variants. And we'll look at that in upcoming videos.